In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through a method of using the C1 compressor to help reduce the reverb tails in an audio track that has already got the reverb embedded into it. Here's the vocal phrase I'll be using for our example, and you will hear now the reverb is part of the track. I'm not running it through dry into a reverb. Have a quick listen. Remember the time you were mine and you promised always there. Cause I know that I do All our days turn to haze and vanished in the end I feel like we have to Right, now what I want to do is compress the signal However, if I do this, I'd likely raise the reverb tail too So here's a way of compressing the signal while simultaneously keeping the reverb under control now, I'm not saying it's going to eliminate the reverb, I'm simply saying we're going to be able to keep it under control. If you do want a plugin that will remove reverb from your signal, from your embedded audio, then it might be worth you checking out Synaptics Unveil. Anyway, all that aside, to do what I want to do, I need to focus my attention on this EQ view down here, at the bottom left. I'll just quickly explain what we see here. Under Type, I can choose between these four different filters, Low Pass, Band Pass, High Pass and Band Reject. Now these work in much the same way as they do when you use a regular EQ plugin. Now just before I do anything else, let me just say that the filter module separates your audio signal into two complementary areas or bands, an active and passive band. And we get to determine how the active and the passive bands operate and function. I'll get to that in a moment. Next to type, we have frequency that allows me to focus on a particular frequency range or area. This can be wide or narrow, and that's controlled by the Q button to its right. Now if I want to move them simultaneously, the frequency and the Q, all I need to do is click here on the crosshair, and both the frequency and the Q adjust together. Now above, I can set the EQ mode to either wideband, which is what it's at at the moment, or sidechain or split. Now in the next tutorial, I'll look at the differences between the options. For the moment, let me explain how flicking through the three options adjusts the EQ view below. With sidechain and split, you'll see two lines, one blue and one red. The passive band is in blue, and the active band is in red. Now, when set to sidechain and I adjust the frequency in the Q by dragging here once more, the frequency area chosen will compress by whatever I set the compressor to, right across the frequency area, 16 to 16K, but triggered only by the smaller frequency area selected. There's also a look ahead button over here. You can engage this. Now, in reality, I tend to leave this on all the time. Although, sadly, you don't get to control the look-ahead time. It's actually fixed at 7.5 milliseconds. Well, it is when you are running 44.1 kHz audio through it. And what this look-ahead is doing is, well, it delays and controls the signal to reduce transient distortion. As I say, I leave it on. Although, that said, the effect of this is minimised when you have long attack times of anything over 15 milliseconds. But all the same, you may as well leave it on. Now, as you're experimenting and familiarising yourself with C1 and the EQ mode, I think it's worth checking out the available presets on your material. All you need to do, of course, is click on Load to browse. Now, with this high frequency enhancer preset, we see the EQ mode is split, meaning the frequency range chosen as the compression trigger will compress its own frequency area. Now, rather than me talking you through this, it's probably better at this point to let you have a listen to some of these presets. So, I'm going to start playback and I'll flick through some of these presets so you can hear the sound. Whilst I'm doing it, have a listen to the way that the compression kicks in on the actual audio signal itself, but because I can sweep around, or indeed these presets choose a particular area within my frequency range, we do get to minimise the effect of the reverb. 
As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, I won't be removing it. I'm just trying to find a way or a method of reducing that part of our audio, the reverb, the reverb tail in fact. I want to reduce that part from getting compressed and then consequently being increased in volume as the makeup gain does its stuff. Anyway, I'll start playback and then you can listen to maybe two or three of these different presets. Here we go. Remember the time you were mine and you promised always there Cause I know that I do All our days turned to haze and vanished in the air I feel like we have to There isn't anything, baby That we can do Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. So, all sound great from the presets chosen. But as I stated, I want to keep the reverb tail under control whilst compressing the signal. Now I'll just do a full reset, and therefore, rather than using a preset, I'll make some manual compression settings as our starting point whilst using the side chain for the EQ mode. I'll set my threshold to minus 26 and my ratio to 8 to 1. I want a short attack time of 2 and because I have got the attack at 2, the look ahead feature will allow me to compress the transients without any noticeable distortion. I'll leave the release at 50. I'll choose bandpass for my type and then as the starting point, I'll set the frequency at 375 and my Q at 0.5. Now, even though I'm going to bypass the gate for this example, it's probably an idea to keep the gate on and set the gate so that you attenuate right at the end of your audio signal where the reverb tail comes in, and that way it will help you reduce that part of the signal. Okay, although saying that, even though it's probably better to do it that way, I'm actually going to bypass the gate to see what I can do first of all with the compression settings. So I'll start playback and sweep around again, hunting for the best bandpass frequency area. Remember the time you were mine and you promised always there. Cause I know that I do. All our days turned to haze and vanished in the air. I feel like we have to. There isn't anything, baby, that we can do. Maybe we don't realize it's over now between me and you. Okay, so as you heard there, employing this EQ mode and then choosing the type appropriately means that I can hunt around the frequency area, compressing only that part of the signal that I wish to compress, but leaving the reverb tails not overly compressed, and therefore being more pronounced from our starting point. Now as I say, employing the gate function as well will make this a little bit more successful, but I'll leave that for you to try. Right, I'm going to finish here then, and in the next tutorial we'll look a little bit further at this frequency area, but we'll also look at side chaining. See you in a moment.